Shoppers looking for year-end gifts may not find what they want to buy at Best Buy. The electronics retailer issued a weak sales forecast for the quarter as it braces for a hit from likely product shortages during the key holiday shopping season. It sees sales falling as much as 2% or rising 1% at best. At issue, iPhones and new gaming consoles. They're key for Best Buy because they sell in large numbers and lure customers who often snap up other items as well. But those products consume semiconductors and a global chip shortage has dented availability of some popular products like Sony's and Microsoft's consoles. And analysts warn supply of Apple's iPhones could also take a hit. Investors punished Best Buy, sending its shares down more than 16 percent in early trading Tuesday. Black Friday. It's an American shopping tradition that's been duplicated all over the world. But this year, the post-Thanksgiving holiday shopping bonanza is likely to be much different in the U.S. than recent years. And it's not just because of the health crisis, says Jeremy King. He's CEO and founder of Attest, a retail data company. Supply chain disruptions are a big problem. So consumers are worried that the items that they want to get won't be available um, at Christmas time in the holidays in December, either because of stockouts driven by supply chains in Europe and North America, or simply because everything's going to get sold out in Black Friday because it lasts so long now. But 42% uh, of consumers say that they've begun their Christmas shopping early in Black Friday, in Black November, because they're concerned about supply chains. And retailers started stocking up what they could and offered holiday discounts earlier than normal. Many major U.S. retailers, Walmart, Target, Macy's, all cited an early start to the holiday shopping season for solid third quarter sales figures. So what's left for bargain hunters who typically wait for Black Friday to stock up on gifts? Shoppers in New York City were out early hunting for sales and they weren't impressed. Not really finding any good deals. <laughs> I haven't really seen too many deals, but we're going to keep walking around to see if we find deals. But that's not likely to dampen the entire holiday shopping season. The National Retail Federation is predicting 2 million more people will shop Thanksgiving Day through Cyber Monday this year compared to last year. And spending for the entire holiday season is projected to rise to a new record. Tech stocks were hit for a second straight session on Tuesday as a spike in interest rates made that sector less attractive. The Dow jumped 194 points due to the strength of banks and energy stocks. The S&P 500 crept seven points higher. The tech-dominated Nasdaq fell 79 points. Max Wolf, CEO of Systematic Ventures, believes stock investors are starting to take their cue from the bond market. So if on the net, there's a little bit less buying because you have a slightly less dovish Fed chief. If on the net, you have slightly higher persistent inflation because you're not going to solve energy issues in the, in the short term. And if on the net, the government's going to need to be in the market borrowing more, then you have all major net structural influences pushing to a slight increase in yields. With an eye on inflation, President Biden coordinated a release of strategic oil reserves in the U.S. and other countries in hopes of easing pain at the pump. But the move, which was widely telegraphed, only temporarily pushed oil prices lower. Crude oil ended the day up by more than 2% to $78.5 a barrel. There were some high-profile misses on the earnings front. Best Buy warned that sales during the crucial holiday shopping quarter will likely be hurt by supply shortages for electronics and other big-ticket items. Shares of the electronics chain tumbled 12%. Zoom had a rough day as investors frowned upon the video conference company's weakest ever quarterly sales growth. The stock, a darling during the health crisis, touched a 17-month low. Turkey's lira had its second worst day ever on Tuesday as it plunged 15% before recovering some ground. The lira hit record lows against the US dollar for an 11th straight session. Turkey's currency has lost 45% of its value this year and fallen just over a quarter since the start of last week. That as inflation soars close to 20%. One minibus driver in Diyarbakir described the cost rises he's witnessed. A bag of flour was 100 lira and now it's 300 lira. What can people do? People are really depressed. People are looking abroad for jobs. President Tayyip Erdogan has put pressure on the central bank to move towards an aggressive easing cycle. His aim is to boost exports, investment and jobs, even as inflation soars and the currency's depreciation speeds up. 
Former Central Bank Deputy Governor Semi Tumen, who was dismissed last month, has called it an irrational experiment with no chance of success. Other economists have called the rate cuts reckless and said Turkey should change course. Tuesday's slide was the lira's worst since the 2018 currency crisis, which led to a sharp recession. The central bank last week cut rates and signalled there was more easing to come. Contrary to standard economic theory, Erdogan insists that high rates aren't needed to tame inflation. The United States on Tuesday announced it would take the rare move of releasing oil from what's called the Strategic Petroleum Reserve part of a coordinated effort with the world's great industrial powers to drive down soaring energy prices. The White House said it will release 50 million barrels of oil in an agreement with China, India, South Korea, Japan and Britain. Climbing energy prices are contributing to overall inflationary pressures that are hammering U.S. President Joe Biden's public approval ratings. The announced release of strategic reserves comes after a group of major oil exporters known as OPEC Plus rebuffed Biden's repeated calls to pump more crude into global markets. The OPEC Plus states have shown no signs of a change of heart ahead of their December 2nd meeting. The UAE's energy minister said Tuesday he does not see the logic of ramping up oil production at this time. U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer welcomed the U.S. announcement, saying it offers, in his words, temporary relief for high gas prices. But he called for a long-term solution to eliminate dependence on fossil fuels and create a, quote, robust green energy economy. But analysts said the price impact stemming from the release of reserves will likely be short-lived after years of declining investments and a strong global recovery from the health crisis. It certainly was short-lived on Tuesday. Crude futures initially fell after the announcement, but rebounded strongly. 